Hey, what's up guys? John here. Inflation rose to 3.2%. Inflation rising 3.2%. The inflation rate hit 3.2% in July over the past year. And they are saying that we are right on the edge of beating this thing. Our inflation rate is lower. We're growing faster. We're economically more advanced than every other major country in the world. But the reality is, is that true? I don't think so. In fact, I think that they're getting ready to rug pull this entire U.S. economy and nearly 205 million Americans over the age of 18 that have credit cards, that have loans, that really are dependent on credit are gonna be greatly impacted, not including all the children, families, everyone else that's going to be impacted as well. This entire country is built on small business and small business is now looking at a massive stage five type of hurricane right ahead. I'm gonna break this down for you because what they are telling us is signaling that they are getting ready to do just what I'm telling you. It's gonna be the greatest rug pull of all time. I'm not saying it's to scare anyone, but look at the facts. Let the facts tell the story. Please hit the like button, hit the like button. YouTube's gonna share this content to educate more people about what's actually going on in the US economy. And if you wanna fix your credit, we'd love to help you at my company, greatcreditfast.com. That's greatcreditfast.com. Go there, schedule a free strategy session. We can see how we can help you. So they say inflation rose to 3.2% in July as prices tick higher for the first time in a year. Now, many people will read that headline and say, sure, maybe that's the case. Now, if you are at the store, if you're shopping, if you're buying anything online, you're realizing that prices in general are going up a hell of a lot more than 3% or 5% or 7%. It's more like 15 to 20 or 30%. You go to Whole Foods, you go to any, any of these stores, you get one bag of groceries, some fruits and some random things, and it's 100 bucks. Like everything is way higher than the numbers in which many people are fed to believe, right? And so I think everyone's clear that inflation, these numbers should be questioned. When they say that our unemployment rate is 3.5%, that's also a number that should greatly be questioned because five years ago, they were looking at unemployment rates based on having one job. Nowadays, Americans have three jobs, two jobs, side hustles. Everyone's working, working, working to try to make ends meet. And so if they are looking at these numbers saying that's what the unemployment rate is, you know, I think that should also be questioned. Now, CNN came out saying that the U.S. economy still needs multiple rate hikes, says top Fed official. So if they are saying that we have record low unemployment rates, that we almost are beating, almost beating on inflation, right? That we, this is the first time in a year, right? The first time in a year that inflation's risen. What they're saying is that we need to hike rates, right? If they're saying that we need to hike rates and we're looking at where the average consumer is right now, it's painting a pretty grim future for the, for the average consumer because the average consumer, you know, we're sitting, consumers have $1 trillion in credit card debt, 1.6 trillion in auto loan debt, 1.7 trillion in student loans that are gonna soon be due, talking 45 days from now. And uh, I mean, you're looking at this picture that's gonna really start to uh, be something that people can't deny. Many people think, oh, this economy is gonna be good. This economy is gonna be, you know, a small little hiccup. No, this is a huge rug pull. And I've been talking about this for a while. They printed 40% of all US dollars in existence in 1776 inside three years. They printed all this money, eviction moratoriums, foreclosures, uh, you know, moratoriums. They had all these bills optional. This economy that they're telling us about right now uh, isn't a real economy. It's an artificial stimulated fake economy, not based on any true fact. Uh, this is like, let me paint this picture here. So they're saying mortgage rates right now are 7.247% for a perfect credit score. I'm talking 800 credit score, 850, right? If you have 780 credit score, you'll still probably get the same financing, 7.247%, right? But if you, so just to put this in a context, the average price for renting an apartment in America, 1,702 bucks, right? $1,700, not bad um, in relation to what it costs to own. $416,000 is the average home price. So if you are have if you have perfect credit, let's just go perfect credit, 7.2%, 6% down payment, which is the average down payment for a first time buyer, 25,000 cash down. You're looking at $3,288 per month in relation to 1702. So basically, twice the cost of renting just to own, plus this does not include the cost such as repairs and being a property owner, landscaping, you know, any of the headaches that come with owning property. So what are you gonna have? You're gonna have a, a smaller, smaller, smaller pool of buyers interested in hopping into a real estate deal. You're gonna have a lot of people that have less money in this inflationary world. You're gonna have a lot of people that are gonna get cut out and not being able to get obtain, not able to obtain credit because they don't have the debt to income ratios to qualify with these high interest rates and these high home prices. So what are you gonna have? you're gonna have a very unique dynamic in the housing market where more than 40% of all mortgages were taken out at the height of the market. And so many of these people owe more on their homes than it's actually worth. 
And so when you look at these numbers, 40% of all mortgages in America taken out inside of two years, right? Inside of two years, these mortgages, average down payment, 6% for first time home buyer, average down payment for a second home, 13%. So you're looking somewhere, you know, average down payment around 10%, right? The cost to sell one of these properties, hiring an agent, that's 5%, a realtor is 5%. Then you have transfer taxes, you know, any other expenses, might be eight, eight, nine percent to sell a property. So these people are, you know, if they if they bought the property and it did not go up at all, they have 1% equity. You're not getting a refinance on that. You need 80% loan to value, uh, best, best case. So and a lot of people aren't gonna qualify. And then, so what are you gonna have? You're gonna have a situation where you're gonna have record high inflation and you're gonna have a world in which people are gonna be desperate due to this inflation. And so what are they gonna do? They're gonna start renting out their properties and this 1702, this number is going to greatly, greatly go down. Meaning the disparity between the cost of renting and the cost of owning is likely going to be questioned. And so what I think is very likely gonna happen is I think we're gonna start seeing a lot of people that can't rent out their properties at a break even and they're gonna start turning their keys back to the bank. That's what I believe is going to happen. Especially, we start to look at this, credit access. We're gonna start seeing credit getting greatly, greatly challenged. People depend heavily on credit in America, and that's continuing to fall, right? A measure to the availability of mortgage credit to drop to the lowest level in a decade last month as lenders sought to reduce operating costs, homeowners cut back on cash out refinancing, mortgage banking, bankers association said, it's, more, it's mortgage credit availability index fell by 0.3% to 96.3% in July decline. In the MCAI indicates that lending standards are tightening while increasing, the index indicates loosening credit, right? I've been warning about this. Now, with this credit card situation, this is what I find very, very fascinating. So the last couple of years, everyone was, you know, they were painted this picture that everything's just gonna keep going up and the economy is gonna be great and that, you know, we're just gonna buy the dip. And people just got accustomed to, yeah, sure, there's small little trenches, but what we're actually witnessing here, it's unlike anything we've seen before because they have more credit card debt than ever before. The cost of service debt five, 10 years ago, you know, was manageable. Now you're talking 25, 26% interest on a credit card. And as the Fed continues to increase interest rates, what's ultimately gonna happen? People are gonna be spending 30% interest on credit cards, right? People are gonna start, and banks are gonna start losing money. Financial institutions are gonna start losing money as defaults continue to soar. And so it's gonna be those with good credit, those with cash in the bank, those with the game plan that are gonna be able to get ahead. And what I think is very likely going to happen here, as we start to see these car repossessions and home foreclosures rising, is we're gonna to start to see more and more and more small businesses that can't get access to credit. And these small businesses can't get access to credit, what are they gonna do? Well, the average small business in America has 20 days, 20 days of cash on hand, so not even enough to make it one month. And so as they continue to increase interest rates and tighten lending standards, they're gonna start issuing more layoffs, they're gonna start reducing their expenses, and they're gonna start selling off assets or closing down their business or selling the business as a whole. That's what they're gonna start doing. They're gonna start making hard decisions in the next couple of years. I mean, that's, that's going to be a, it's going to be a very unique economy. But when you look at duplexes, triplexes, fourplexes, single-family homes that are rentals, you have the uh, maybe twenty million, twenty million four hundred thousand somewhere in that twenty million five hundred thousand a houses owned exclusively by mom and pops, by mom and pops. Most of them are small business owners. We're going to start seeing a flood of this inventory at the market. There's no doubt about it. But the big question becomes. What are people gonna pay for a duplex or a triplex or a fourplex if mortgage rates are 8%, right? If, if your mortgage rates hit 8% and, and you have a duplex hypothetically and each unit is renting for say 1500 bucks, pulling in three grand, people aren't gonna you know, put down hypothetically 20% 20, 20 down, you know, $80,000 down to, uh, to, to lose money, right? So what are we gonna start to see happen? We're gonna start seeing a lot less people available that are gonna get access to credit, have available access to credit. And because of that, we're gonna start seeing a larger pool of sellers, most likely, than available buyers. And uh, cash buyers are going to become greatly rewarded. Those that have the ability, the financing, everything in line are gonna be rewarded uh, for their patience, at least so it seems. What do you think about this entire situation? Would you buy a duplex or a triplex or a fourplex uh, and put $80,000 down, $400,000 property, and lose money? I don't think so, I don't think so. So that's what I believe is gonna happen. I think we're gonna witness a huge, huge rug pull and we're already starting to see it with these inflation numbers or at least the numbers in which they provide us, the jobs numbers, at least the numbers in which they provide us and this storyline, this headline.
So what do you think about this? Drop below, let's have a conversation about this. Uh, add me on IG. And if you want to fix your credit, you want to position yourself for the greatest wealth transfer of all time, which we're in right now. They're getting ready, I believe, to issue a massive rug pull in the U.S. economy. You're going to need great credit. You're going to need great credit, 750, 780, 800 credit score and above. So if you want to get there, we'd love to help you at my company, greatcreditfast.com. That's greatcreditfast.com. I'll catch you guys next video.